It's the first thing we learn how to do. It's easier for some and harder for others. It is the one thing that keeps us alive. Hi, I'm Evan Schmidt, and welcome. Once again, I will be your guide through a season of bicycle racing. So sit back, relax, and remember to breathe. first race brings us to the University District of Seattle. A kickoff to the road racing season, the race at Boat Street is a test for early season racers. This year's race marked a new beginning. In 2006, Brad Lewis died suddenly and tragically during the race. The promoters saw it only right to name the race after him to pay tribute to one of the nicest guys in the Northwest Peloton. The dedication of the race brought out some of Seattle's best talents, most of whom were personal friends of Brad. After a special call-up for Brad's former teammates and close friends, the race took a moment of silence. Yeah. Miss you, Brad! Yes, Brad's ready?
It's June and we're back in Hood River, Oregon for the Mount Hood Cycling Classic. This year I had the opportunity to ride in the fall car for the longest stage of the race, a 90 mile road race with over 9,500 feet of climbing. Riding in the car put you right in the middle of the action. There was never a quiet moment with riders continually going back to their team cars to take on food and water. And with record temperatures hitting nearly 100 degrees, each rider has a contest to see how many bottles they can fit on board. A bag of lemons? Have I been that bad? This is calm one, I copy. At the end of the day, the strongest riders were the last standing to battle it out and route to the base of the Mount Hood Meadows ski area. Just get past stay right, stay right. The final day of racing was a 60 minute criterium in downtown Hood River. While the top riders battled it out on the final day of racing, 
There was another story going on behind the race. The national team from Rwanda was in attendance. For those of you who don't know, Rwanda is a small country on the continent of Africa that suffered a genocide over 10 years ago. Now in the rebuilding stages, an organization called Project Rwanda is set out to help the country rebuild, using the bicycle as the primary source of transportation. A part of the project was focused on establishing a national cycling team called Team Rwanda. All these guys may not be winning races. The story of how they got there will inspire many. If you happen to venture into the northern part of Washington State, you're bound to hit the sleepy town of Winthrop. During the winter months, the Metau Valley attracts thousands of Nordic skiing enthusiasts with its world-class trail system. But we're not here for that because there's no snow. We're here for the two-day, three-race Omnium called the Metau Tour. An Omnium is a race based on points, not time. The rider with the lowest points wins. The weekend begins with a time trial in Mazama. Later that day, the riders contested in a criterium around downtown Twisp. So Let's go for a ride and see what the race looks like from the front seat of the pace car. was the road race. Sunday morning rose with bluebird weather. The beautiful Metau River Valley provided a perfect backdrop for the overall winner to be decided.
Summertime brings many things, long days and hot nights. For racers come the Criteriums, one of the easiest races to watch. A Criterium is a short circuit course roughly a mile in length through closed city streets, making it a sprinter's paradise. It's all the racing action packed into 60 minutes of drama on two wheels. A 30-minute drive west of Denver, Colorado on Interstate 70 will lead you to the small gold mining town of Idaho Springs. The town lies right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains and is the start of today's race, the Bob Cook Memorial Hill Climb of Mount Evans. Part of the course was used to stage a few scenes from the Hollywood blockbuster American Flyers. The race has been happening since 1962, making it among the oldest races in the U.S. Bob uh, was on the national team. He was headed for the 80 Olympics on the team, and we didn't go. And then about six months after that, started having massive headaches, and he had melanoma cancer that was behind his eyes, and he died within three months of being diagnosed. And he was 23 years old, and he'd been such a figure with the race that his family decided that they wanted Mount Evans named after Bob and they financed it for many, many, many years till they got into their, you know, their late 60s actually. The climb is the King Kong of all climbs. We're talking about 28 miles of climbing starting at 7,000 feet and topping out at well over 14,000 feet, making the Mount Evans Auto Road the highest in North America. This is the race of the true mountain goats in the sport. And Bob Cook was, um, started as a citizen's racer here, um, used to ride the mountain every week in good weather from his house, he used to live in Inglewood, and it just, the mountain meant the world to him, and he had people from all over the world come challenge it, you know, uh, going back in names, Steve Bauer, Greg LeMond, Lance Armstrong when he was a junior, um, Jock Boyer, Ron Kiefel, Davis Finney, Alexi Graywall, Mike Engelman. So there's been a tradition of like the climbers having to win Mount Evans to make 
their nationals. When you get to the top, when, when the altitude is so high, uh, in the wind is there's a lot of wind up top. It's it's not really a lot. It's not really possible to go much faster than than you. I mean, you you really want speed. You know, you're running on no oxygen. Your muscle recruitment is so low. It's definitely a race that I don't think anyone would kind of do from sea level. You know, living in Boulder, I'm able to go up peak to peak highway and train quite a bit there. You know, the eight, nine, ten thousand foot range, and that's about as high as I usually get. You know, I think you kind of have dimensional returns if you get beyond that. So, um, I think if you're doing a lot of racing up here, you'd probably need to probably acclimate, but I usually just, you know, figure you can kind of fake it for that, that 30, 40 minutes that you're at that high of an elevation, but it definitely kind of alters you a little bit, you know, you feel a little lightheaded, and even coming down, your kind of body's first is really hot, and then you get cold, and then you get hot again. This year's race hosted around a thousand riders, including over 300 citizen riders, one unicyclist, and one ultra marathon runner, unofficially of course, and for the record, after riding up, the unicyclist rode back down. The pro men's field held a combination of talent and experience. Current course record holder Tom Danielson was back to make an assault on his previous record of 1 hour 41 minutes that he set in 2004 in a snowstorm. Seasoned veteran Scott Moniger was there too to help Danielson make his record push. So let's hop into the back of the lead car and watch the race unfold. About four miles to go, Tom decides to make an attack on Scott after reaching Summit Lake, approximately 13,000 feet. With time running out on the record, Tom cranks it to 11 to try to make the summit in time.
my clothing is helpless. Oh, I'm naked beneath her touch. So in the love, her spirit so blind, she wandered forever, forever. Alright. What's also cool about this race is. The year I made it, I was on the same team as Scott Moniker, and uh, and he taught me a lot. You know, my, I did half a year with Mercury, and he really showed me a lot how to race. And he's a really smart racer. And so, you know, when I again, like when I saw him in the race today, I wasn't going to flick him or or anything like that, or try to just race against him. I said, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to go for a good time, and it would be nice for him to have a good time too, as well. Instead of instead of say, well. You know, if uh, you know, it's more important for me to beat him or drop him early on than than take and then work together. No, I mean, I, I saw him there and I thought this is a cool situation. You know, this guy's given a lot to the sport. This guy is a, an icon in American cycling, and uh, and I was proud to be there with him. So, if I could help and he could help me, it would be a good race. Although Tom was off his course record by just over a minute. It was an accomplishment for the Colorado-based rider. After battling illness for most of the season, Mount Evans marked a comeback for Tom. Scott sent a personal best on the course, finishing less than a minute off of Tom. It was a nice way to end Scott's final season as a professional since he will be retiring this year after more than two decades of getting paid to ride a bike. Uh, if you could be one animal, <laughs> what, what would you be? <sighs> I think I'd like to be a, a domestic cat because I've got a couple and all they do is sleep. I mean, they have a sweet life, you know, they eat, they nap, you know, for six or eight hours a day, they sleep all night, and it just seems like a pretty good life, you know, they really have a lot of, a lot of stress, so it seems like that might be me, you know, they're pretty just low, low, uh, low drama kind of animals and just sort of pretty low key, so you know, that, that could be me. Maybe now he will finally get his chance to live like a cat. Most of the races in this movie have been around for many years. This next race is different. It's August, and we're in Roslyn, Washington for the first edition of the Roslyn Mountain Bike Festival. the activities that happen in and around town. It brings a whole new, different breed of people here, really. The, the bikers that um, 
that come and explore the woods and all the trails we have to offer, I think it's going to be really big in the future. We also had a lot of uh, volunteers uh, for the festival and we needed a lot of volunteers. It was well received. There was a great group of people um, that left everything clean. They were respectful. It was, it was a great addition to the town. The goal of the festival was to be able to raise a thousand dollars for the Rosslyn Library and we met that goal. And in 2008 we hope to be able to at least double that. Don't build your home out of paper and matches and never ever play with fire. Never play switches in a stick strong oven when the temperature keeps rising higher. If you find us some time that your mind is alive, we'll never let your hope expire. The RFD can save the hood. Save the day, Renee, we hire your home, smoke, quiet. We hire your home, your smoke, quiet. Your home, oh yeah, your smoke, quiet. We hire your home. Summer has come to an end. The days get shorter and many of the summer racers begin to hibernate. Some of these racers transition to cyclocross racing. Cyclocross is the variety pack of bicycle racing condensed in the toughest 60 minutes you'll ever ride. It has every kind of weather and terrain and if you can't ride it you jump off and run. Yes, mud, sand, pavement and dirt. Cyclocross has it all. Well, you know, when you ask what it, what's going on with cross racing in America, I think we've seen an organic growth going really back to the late 90s. I think that's where we got traction. Uh, the Matt Kelly, Tim Johnson, Mark Gullickson years. And, you know, that's going back to 99 when they had their success at the World Championships. And I think that's when it caught fire. But it was sort of smoldering at that point. It seems to be a huge groundswell that's really gaining momentum that way. And it really used to be a fringe thing of like, even people who were into bike racing didn't know what cyclocross was. They're like, what's that, motocross, huh? And you're like, no, it's more like a road bike, but in the dirt. And they're like, that doesn't make any sense. There's definitely growth overall, and I think it's just gonna continue to get bigger. Field sizes are getting bigger. Still aren't just getting general people out to the races though, which is something that we have to move towards. When you tell people like, yeah, they're gonna run, they're gonna jump off their bikes, you know, that they're, that's a, like, kind of a foreign concept to some people when what they've been doing is commuting on their bikes and they're starting to love bikes, you know? The future of the sport I, it seems to be growing, you know, everything, each year there's more people doing the races, National has, Nationals has some ridiculous number of participants, and 
you know, everything. There's more cross bikes out there, more cross Pacific products, more teams. The whole thing has just gotten bigger. I don't think it's going to reach, you know, the level that road racing has or anything like that. But for sure, for a niche sport and in, inside a niche sport, it's getting to be, you know, a bigger part of it. I don't know what my favorite part is because I love the suffering during the race. But I love the camaraderie after the race, and I love, I mean, it was, it's pretty much, it's a whole package deal. And everything about Cross, you know, makes it fun. These guys race, they, you know, if, if you're a Cross racer who's successful now, you've raced in front of four people and a cow at some point in your career. Do you have a favorite part of cyclocross? I like it when it's crappy out. <laughs> I don't like dirt crits like we've had for the first half of the season. Like it when it's gnarly and hard to hard to stay on your bike. So you like snow? Yeah, I like snow for sure. Every September, the Starcross Cyclocross race kicks off the fall racing season in the Northwest. The tight course woven in and around the velodrome at Marymore Park is Cyclocross in a bottle because you can see the entire course. Oh. And did I mention they race at night? My name is Barry Wicks. I ride for the Kona Cyclocross team. Uh, tonight, I think I'm going to beat Morgan. And uh, that's my main goal. Actually, that is my goal. No, I think it's going to be an interesting race. This year, the course is a lot faster than it has been in the past. Um, I think a lot of us are expecting tight, muddy racing, which has been the past few years. And now the course is really wide open and really fast. So I think it's going to be a new dynamic. and. I don't know, it's early in the season, so we don't really know who's fast right now. So it'll be interesting to see kind of who's going really well and everything else. But I foresee some sort of front group forming um, just because there's a lot of drafting. And then hopefully I'll be in there and see what happens and play by ear and hopefully try to win. Ah, uh, Ryan Jabone. Oh, Ryan Jabone. Stargrass. 07. Kind of chilly. Don't feel so fast, but you know, whatever. It happens. How do you feel about the lack of rain? Uh, I, I feel fantastic about the lack of rain. Uh, I'm not ready to get that dirty and muddy yet. Uh, I just don't think my handling abilities are quite up to par, and so I don't want to crash. This would be kind of slimy, you know, first cross race of the year. And we'll see. Now in its fifth year, Starcross was the first cyclocross race under the lights. National champions Ryan Trebone and Barry Wicks, along with national champions of Denmark and Switzerland, were among the stacked men's field that made the trip over. You feel any extra weight with that uh, different colored skin suit? Uh, I just don't want to suck, you know. Um, I'd like to win, but I really don't want to lose, you know. <laughs> I don't want to lose any of the races, but, you know, it's, it's nice to be national champ. It's a pretty good honor, you know. Cool. Try and race it well, so we'll see.
Midway through the race, a selection of three riders made a break. Trebone, Wicks, and Swiss national champion Christian Hoyle. But then, disaster struck. Crash. Tell us, tell us about it. Well, the race is kind of just getting boring. I mean, Ryan and I were having trouble getting rid of Christian, so I decided to try something crazy. And I went super high on the banking in the velodrome, and it was a good line, and I had a lot of speed, but it was a little too much speed. So I went and tried to go through the corner. The old grass tire combination wasn't quite there and slid out. So it was all right, though. I knew I'd probably be able to catch back up, so I just. It's kind of annoying because I had to kind of use some energy to catch up and, rather than attacking. But, you race last night? You know, crash just happened. It's the first race of the year, first time on the cross bike, so it happens. Yeah. Traveling to race after race, I get to meet some of the fastest riders in the country. Luckily for me, I got to meet one of the fastest riders in the world, America's very own Jonathan Page. My best friend was doing some mountain biking and I took his bike off for a ride and I got into it and my brother was doing some racing also and so that's how I started racing, uh, being a part of bike riding and then I met up with uh, Frankie McCormick and he taught me all the cyclocross uh, technique and things and that's how I started. Jonathan spends half the year racing in the heartland of cyclocross, Belgium. He made the move over six years ago. Jonathan was a goldfish in a shark tank. He had to prove he was good enough to be with the best, and he sure did. At the 2007 World Championships, he stunned the world by almost winning the race. His silver medal was the best an American had ever done at Worlds. I'm lucky to be a professional cyclist. But best, the favorite part is probably the support of the, the fans and the, um, the atmosphere and how much respect they give to the athletes and uh, that's my favorite part, to be part of something that uh, is so popular is a good thing. It's different than here in the United States and uh, it's the NFL or, you know, of bike racing there. Yeah. I like to get the most out of myself and um, the most out of the course that I'm riding on. To me, it, combination with cyclocross is a bunch of factors and you're trying to eliminate the factors and be uh, your best and uh, that's that's what I like about it. I guess if you weren't a professional cyclist what what do you think you would be? Yeah I think I would be a landscaper. That's a problem. I like landscape. It's fun. Cool. And uh, Don't like it. it's a good question. I think about that and I really thought about that after I got injured and uh, so now I don't take it for granted. I, really appreciate what I do for a living. Did you have any role models growing up? Like, uh, yeah, there, yeah, Frankie McCormick was definitely a big role model of mine. He taught me everything that, that had to do with the technique when I first started out, so uh, yeah, he's a good role model. Is there like a race that sticks out as a highlight? Yeah, well, the World Championships. Well, 
thousands and thousands of people there and you know, being a part of that just uh, I'll never forget it. It's one thing that no one can ever take away from it, so it's great. December in Portland, Oregon is not the hottest winter destination. However, it was the destination of the final big weekend of racing before the national championships in Kansas. The earth, wind, and fire were in attendance, but no, it wasn't September. It was December, and if you could stand through what locals were calling the 40-year storm, you were treated to a real cyclocross race. Um, strategy for today is to not crash and make too many mistakes. What do you think of the snow today? Oh, the snow? Today? Well, hopefully it doesn't come. This weather is like it is every time we come to Portland. Cold, crappy, and rainy, so just what I expected. So does it suit your style, or are you more of a dry guy? Um, I think the rain suits my style. Usually I seem to excel in crappy conditions for whatever reason. I hate racing in them just as much as anybody else, but for some reason I seem to be better in them. Uh, I think it's going to break apart pretty quick. There's some pretty heavy conditions, so I think it's going to split up. I mean, the first lap it might stay together, but after that it's going to break apart into just sort of individual riders or small groups. And, uh, Hopefully I'll be in the front of those riders. <laughs> if you could be one animal, what would you be? Well, maybe a fox. I've been seeing a lot of foxes lately. That seems to be my animal this year, so I have to go with the fox.
It's the middle of December, and we're in Kansas for the Cyclocross National Championships. With heavy snow in the forecast and temperatures going below zero with wind chill, you might ask yourself, what in the world are we doing here? It's the big show, of course. Big because the most prized jersey in racing is on the line, the champion of America. Big because there are over 2,000 registered athletes competing over four days. Just tried telling them they can't ride their bike in weather like this. Boom, bottom, 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 Here's a group of riders sporting the most popular move of the weekend, crashing. Now I'm still thinking, love you, as we are walking and singing, but whatever the smile, no matter what you are thinking, Seven months before, Andy was in the hospital with multiple broken bones and a question whether he could even walk again. Today, he became a national champion. During the race, um, everybody's yelling at me and they're, you know, they're just like, go get him, go get him. And they're all so excited, but the course is so treacherous that it's like, don't get excited. You can't go do anything because, or you know, you can't overcook a corner or you can't go too fast down a straightaway because you can't slow back down at the end of it, you know? And it's just like, you know, I want to go get him as bad as I can because it's like, that's the race win right there in front of me. And and I can see him coming up to him, but it's like just stay in control and just just one corner at a time. Because I knew, you know, if you blow one corner, your race is done. It's like, that's your only shot. So it's had to be just perfect. And so the control right at the end of the race was so intense of just like, you want to be so excited, but you're just like, you turn yourself into just this piece of steel. You're just like, mm, go do the job. And that's it. And I didn't even know I had the race one until I passed him at like 75 meters to go. 
and even then I was just I thought he was just falling back to like get on my wheel and do a sprint and I was just like oh man it's on and I look look back and he's dropping back and I have a gap and I'm just two laps of control just broke loose and it was just like so much relief and yeah all this emotion that I had just like clamped down on to just maintain the control just to make it through the course flawlessly and it just let go and so then you know, I see a picture of me on the coming across the line and it's just like everything all at once two laps of excitement and relief that it actually worked out and everything it was just like oh just this huge flood coming out and and yeah it just I've been working for you know six months at it so it was just like Finally, and it all came together. When the weather cleared on Sunday, the real drama unfolded. The fastest men and women were scheduled to go off. battle between Katie Compton and Georgia Gold. Could Katie pull off the four-peat? The women's race started with a bang, and unfortunately, a little bit of this, too. There's a man in a boat In the middle of the ocean He's alone and he floats No one even notices his face When he cries Shoulders all the pain the men's race was loaded with contenders. Jonathan Page, Ryan Trebone, Todd Wells, and Tim Johnson were all favorites coming into Super Sunday. With over 100 starters, the start is going to be in the famous words of Dave Toll, absolute pandemonium. There's a boy that's sick and watches people pass him on the street with their feet and hurry to get through the day and when went home, he would lie awake in bed at selection had been made and only two riders remained page versus johnson the riders test each other on every part of the course the race turns into a race of perfection one tiny error will cost a rider the race So this concludes the film. I'm Evan Schmidt, and thank you for watching. I hope I've inspired you to go explore your world. Go ride your bike, and always remember to breathe.